changes and to top it all we've been trying to digest the new contract yes. i mean what the hell was that about <laughs> now now yep. that's not what we're here to talk about okay. don't have the headspace of the time to do that focus yep. focus my focus dear right what we're really here for now this is something we've had lots of people contact us and say can you cover this um, and it's about how do you get the relevant governance in place so you can use your ai tools safely in general practice and we're hoping to show you how to use them safely, legally, and without tripping over the red tape, of which there is plenty. Yes, but a disclaimer. So we're talking about our journey and how we did it for our practice, and we're hoping there's learning for you there. But actually, if you have any questions or things aren't right, please check Always with your DPO. Always consult your DPO. Yes, yep. and, and seek advice, because not every practice is the same. Mm. So with the NHS under the cosh, we're doing more and more with fewer and fewer hands and less time. Mm -hmm. And these AI scribes can give us back precious hours yeah not just handy but you know they actually allow you to make eye contact with your patient you can speak to them instead of scrambling and typing but lots of practices are being told no don't touch them yet and the fear is around the governance the good news is that you can actually use them now mm. you just need to do it properly and that's exactly what we're hoping to walk you through today so a lot of the reason for this is the brilliant Dr. Dave Triska. He's a legend, a GP legend. He has built this absolutely amazing AI compliance advisor tool. So it's free, simple, and actually tailored for general practice. So you just select your AI provider, Heidi, Tortoise, Medloop, Lexicon, and a million others. There's so many yeah. now. Um, and you click a button and it generates all the government governance documents for you. Uh, and it's, it doesn't do it in a Mickey Mouse way. They are, really are very accurate and tailored to that particular product. So it's brilliant. Thank you, Dave. Yes. <laughs> but, 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 don't just download and forget them. You actually need to read them and then tweak and adjust them for your practice and actually put them into action. Yeah, and the link to the tool is going to be down in the description along with a few other uh, really important documents. Let's break it down. Um, so these are the core documents uh, that you need and we'll try to explain it in, uh, in, in plain English. So the first one I'd say is your roadmap, your implementation policy. And this is your blueprint. It, it kind of sets out how your practice decides which AI tools to use, how you approve them and how you bring them into action safely. The second one is your ongoing safety net. The call is the risk management and monitoring policy. Your how do you do your regular checks, audits quarterly of the tools outputs and maybe an annual bias review. You need a way to have a clear incident reporting process. You know, things we do naturally anyway for lots of our clinical stuff, but you need to tailor this looking at your AI tool. And you just need to standardize that reporting and build it into your processes mm -hmm. so you're doing it automatically, mm -hmm. um, regularly. Third, we've got the privacy and data protection policy, and this one covers your GDPR responsibilities. It shows how patient data is handled safely with clear rules on minimization, access, retention, and also deletion. Um, the fourth one is the DPIA, so Data Protection Impact Assessment. Now, it does sound a bit daunting, but actually it's just a structured way of asking, what data does this AI tool use? What are the risks to patient privacy? What are we doing to reduce those risks? Now, we use Heidi and we really like it. And it's DPIA covers encryption, pseudo pseudonymization, <laughs> <laughs> um, deletion yeah. schedules, and, and all the all key, the key stuff. stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And fifth, you've got the clinical safety gaze which is your DCB0160. You know, first time you look at this, <laughs> you it's, go, ah! it's, exposed, but it's actually quite straightforward and common sense. Well, Dave makes it like that. This one's vital 
Um, so the DCB0160 is a NHS safety standard that applies when you use software that affects clinical care. So you should actually have one for every piece of software that you're using. Ooh, do we have one for Amos? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you have to show how the system is safe uh, with a risk register, a hazard log, and clinical oversight. And we did uh, risk hazard workshops with our team and we built a mitigation plan with the hazard log. That's really quite simple to do and it is really, it's common sense. Yeah. Um, the next one is the supplier's clinical safety case, um, DCB016, DCB0129. Have yes, I got that? Correct. Yes, okay. Yes. So the, but actually, this is the responsibility mainly of your supplier and they should have completed one. So that's their version of the safety case for doing this. Um, and it shows that they've actually developed the software safely and ask for it. And, and if actually, they don't have it, walk mm, away. Yes. <laughs> if, they, yeah. if they shrug and say, what's the DCB129, walk away. Okay. <laughs> um, so we've got the AI procurement checklist. So this is your due diligence cheat sheet. Is the supplier GDPR compliant? Mm. Do they encrypt properly? Have they done bias testing? Uh, this just helps you tick all the legal boxes before you sign up. Now, the next thing, what we're going to talk about is um, what the important things you have to have in place um, when you go live or after you go live. So You can't just print out the documents and put them in a folder. No. There are things that you need to do. And we should be doing for all the other software that we're using, yeah. including EMIS. Yeah. <laughs> well, we do a lot of this for all our other clinical and safety stuff. So yeah, it's here. So okay, back to it. So once your AI scribe is live, you can't just go, all right, we're done. Now there's other steps to take to make sure that you stay safe and compliant. You know, it's an ongoing process. Yep. And that's why you need the quarterly output audits. So these review the quality of the notes. Are they accurate? Yeah. Are they clinically appropriate? Are there any red flags slipping through? And there's different ways to do this. I think for us, our team, we use MS Teams a fair bit. So this is kind of, we're going to use this for keeping our log, for instance. Um, the annual bias audit. Now, this is a, an interesting one to consider because you need to make sure the system is fair across all patient groups. Mm. So, you know, ethnicity, age, gender, is it treating them all the same? And actually, if you do spot issues, you need to escalate them to your supplier. Now, we've talked about the quarterly audits that we're doing. Um, we also have like a monthly clinical meeting. And, and I think actually we will make this like a standing item yeah. uh, in our meeting to make sure we do cover this in a, in a, in a routine manner. Formalized way, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So we, there is also um, incident logging. Um, so we need to log and review any glitches, errors or risks that we're noticing whilst we're using any of these softwares. Uh, especially, um, especially things that can impact patient safety. So, uh, as Freddie was saying, we use MS Teams at our practice and we've set up a folder for people to log these quickly and easily. Uh, and we actually use uh, AI uh, for all our clinical meetings now uh, and all our business meetings. And um, we've just customised our reporting template to specifically document um, when we talk about these and any, any issues uh, re regarding clinical safety for software and also things like safeguarding. So everything is documented and organized within your minutes um, automatically without someone having to remember it all the time. It's there. Yeah, but it is really important, you know, to, to not just trust it, but to go back, review it, um, mm. and remember the risk is, is sits with you still. Yeah. Um, so it's important to have an annual policy review. So dust off your documents at least once a year and, and update them because, you know, things change. And, and if there's a, a change to the system as mm. well, you know, you might have to review it even Soon. sooner. Or, or if things go wrong, you've had a major problem, like a glitch, you need to look at it <coughs> and see what, what do we need to do differently. Mm. Brings us along to training. So everyone who uses, uh, who's going to use the AI needs to be trained up before the go live date. Yeah. And also, 
uh, they need to have refresher training if the system changes because you know every day there's a new feature on each of these new softwares that we're, we're testing out. So there's no shortcuts to this. You do need to have the training in place. So we're just gonna talk about some of the, um, the questions that we get asked quite a lot, the frequently asked questions. So do you need a DPO sign-off? Um, so the answer is not technically, uh, but it's smart to keep them in the loop. Yeah. Some DPOs are, are really onto it and you know are, are able to give you all the support to talk you through all of this and, and sign it off and set you on your way, but others might not be there yet. But so as long as you've gone through this process, you should be fine. Okay. And the other question is indemnity. What about indemnity? Now, this is a, a great question. Um, all the major indemnity providers have actually issued statement positions on this. Um, in summary, basically, the clinician is responsible for every entry they make into medical records, and the clinician needs to check every entry thoroughly, so the buck actually stops with you. Um, we're going to get these yep. and put the links in, in the notes. So you can actually have the position statements of all the major indemnity providers there in front yep. of you. Yeah, and that Hopefully that will be quite reassuring. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it is your responsibility when you press when you click and paste into the notes, those are, you are taking full responsibility for that, so you do need to check them. Yeah, and that can also go with some of your mitigation in these documents yeah. that we talked about. Absolutely. We also get asked, do, do patients need to know mm. that uh, you're using a scribe? Um, I mean, I, I, we've taken the position that yes, uh, it's part of their right to be informed. Uh, so you need to update your privacy notice and speak to your PPG, get them involved. I always get consent at the start of each consultation and there's posters in our waiting rooms, there's videos playing and lots of posts on our website about it as well. And actually we use a special microphone so I have a microphone clipped to me and there's another microphone which I place next to the patient and that's a really good way of prompting them to say look here's the microphone, I'm using a scribe to make my notes and that, that kind of just makes it um, very clear to them yeah. and, and they can consent. Uh, yeah. Yay or nay? I've never had one not consent. Not yet, no. 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 Um, so just to be clear, um, this doesn't replace you. So you still review and sign off every note. So the AI is an assistant, Absolutely. not a clinician. Really important. Um, so you do need to check your notes before you uh, press save and wait for the wheel to spin round on Emus. <laughs> but you do need to check it. So there you have it. That's the, the, the governance is doable. Uh, the tools are here. And the difference to your workload is genuinely massive, yeah. I would say. Yeah. So um, we've linked to Dr. Triska's tool below. Use it, um, tweak it, and make it your own. Um, and hopefully this will get us going so we're not waiting for permission to fix our own workload. So we need this technology now. We mm -hmm. can't wait for all the bureaucratic processes within the NHS to sign it all off. As long as you do it safely, you're okay. Thanks for watching. Remember, stay sharp, stay compliant. And don't let and the, don't let the red live. tape win.